How about you? I'm Joe, and today we're going to show you what I know, what I learned about these P drive ramps over the last four years of using them. Uh, let's see here. So, we're going to start off with how these cam arms have been examined over the last four years since they came out. Uh, the common way that people have looked at them or do look at them right now today and this here using the pivot bolt or a bolt that's eight millimeters to run through the ramps how people have used that to look at to see if there's differences in the roller profiles and if one to them is more aggressive or less aggressive than the other so Let's see, I'm going to do this and put a backdrop so you can see that's pretty common what people do. Including myself, I probably was one of the first guys to post a picture like this on the forums. Hey, look at this ramp, this 966 versus this 965 or what have you. And so with the pivot bolt in there, oop. so with the pivot bolt in there, you can see <laughs> how all the roller profiles look the same, right? But that's not the case because what we've done is we've used the pivot bolt here to fasten everything together. But what about these holes? Like there's another hole there and each one of these ramps could be different. And we're gonna prove here in just a moment. So here we got a 965 high elevation skiddy ramp. This one is the 990 low elevation summit ramp or backcountry ramp. Uh, and, and let's see here. This one here is the 968 where you'll see on a trail sled. And they have kind of the same profile curve, right? The arc of the profile is the same, but the relationship between this hole here and the roller profile it's different on each one of them, and I can prove this. So here we have a 600 RS ramp, 974. It's got the notch in it for high engagement. It's about 5,500 RPM engagement with whatever clutching they got in there right now. So look at that, how much different in roller profile there is if you could see that now we flip this around here this shows where the problem is about measuring this these ramps with the with the bolt look at the 974 it's right towards you you can see the notch and look how high the clicker axle hole is off compared to the rest of these ramps Okay, we're gonna take a 850 turbo, the 2020 and a half 850 turbo ramp. Here's a well used 984 ramp and show the same thing. So look how different the clicker assembly hole is in relation to the rest of them. And then you can see like there's quite a bit difference and the ramp is at a different height here. So it acts differently as far as aggressiveness. With that bolt, you can see that this is not exactly an accurate measurement because just using this one bolt is not taking into account where the clicker assembly hole is, right? And that's a factor because it there's a difference between this pivot bolt and where the roller is. Roller. <laughs> so that's where the roller sits, say in the clutch, right? So I've been blessed the last couple of seasons to be able to test for Dale at Dalton, his 902 and 903 ramps, and getting invited to go see Boss Racing testing and the Skidoo Race Department and meet their techs and Jamie the crew chief and Danny Poirier the race tech and all the P-Drive ramp experiments 
that they were doing to try and extract more out of the sled and get a better hole shot and just whatever they do at testing for snow cross. So when I got to attend some of the snow cross testing, seeing the ramp experiments in action um, from Skidoo themselves, their own ramps they were experimenting, seven or eight different ramps, then ramps they had made from about four private shops. Uh, here's one. That's a aftermarket ramp. Some private shop made them for boss racing only. And with their own curve. These, uh, well, I ain't gonna say what they are. <laughs> so now getting to talk to some of the builders who've made these ramps, I've got to see why is this ramp here different than these two ramps and how the clicker assembly hole location is different. So I got to learn a bit of theory on how these work. The differences in what they do as far as aggressiveness and not aggressive. Aggressive as in lugging the engine more, putting more load on the engine, not aggressive, more higher engine speed at part throttle, right? More rant rant, like a, say a 600 RS needs. So now I'm gonna show you why doing this method here is kind of defective because of not taking into the relationship of this clicker axle hole versus where the roller sits on the ramp and this pivot bolt. So I made a uh, couple of drawings. Let's see if that... Ah, I ditched all the drawings and I'll, I'll just use this. So you remember how having the bolt in here yeah, you could make the roller profile look <laughs> all the same, but it doesn't take in relation where the clicker assembly hole is. So I kind of simulate what's going on here. And, and some of the ramps I got to see that were being experimented with to produce whatever results they had to make out there. So what that pivot bolt doing it that way doesn't take into account is the distance from the pinch point, the nip, right? That's called the nip between the roller here and the ramp roller, right? And the ramp, say one ramp could be 12 millimeters between the nip point and the center line of the eight millimeter hole. There could be another one with, I'm exaggerating here by moving it, but so say 12, 13, a one could be 14 millimeter. So this one here say could be at 12 millimeter, like for a trail sled. We'll move that a bit and it's exaggerating. This could be like 13 millimeter for say the 2020 850 turbo for how the aggressiveness of that ramp. And then say, so we had 12, 13, 14 mil from the nip point to the center here could be 14 mil. So now this one here could be like for the 600 RS. It needs to run at 86 to 8,800 RPM. So the ramp is gonna be much higher in the clutch to have higher engine speed at part throttle compared to back here for a trail sled that will have less engine speed or a low RPM at part throttle. So say a uh, trail sled could be at 6,200 RPM at 60 miles an hour and for a RS ramp or a race ramp, it could have not 6,200 at 60 miles an hour, but 7,500 RPM at 60 miles an hour. And so what this pivot relationship does, it changes the engine speed at part throttle settings. And here we have another way that the ramp could be built. So you see, I'm gonna look in the viewfinder there. Ramp could be like this and then Another one could be like this, more aggressive, and then more aggressive. And you notice though how the distance from here to the roller, say, is 12 millimeters, that's not changing. But what is changing when this is mounted in the clutch, right? The ramp is mounted in the clutch. When you change the relationship, say the center line here to the center line, of the clicker assembly hole in relation to the like the average arc of this ramp here say this is going to pull x hard x or y hard this will pull a little harder 
on top end. This will pull a little harder on top end than this one, say. And this will be less aggressive and this will be more aggressive on top end. So what some builders have done, or some ramps are, so this is, this is the same here, this line, imaginary axis line, but the roller path here has been changed. And we'll see in another video of examples of these ramps that I'm speaking here showing up lying against each other. Okay, another one here. Uh, may, might be the last one. There are some ramps that look like... Oh, look in the viewfinder. Yeah, okay. Th there are some ramps that change their aggressiveness or their shift profile this way. <laughs> so say this one here will pull hard towards top end. This will pull less hard towards top end. There'll be higher engine speed at part throttle. This one here will have even more engine speed at part throttle than this one, right? So this one will be the most aggressive, lowest engine speed at part throttle, and this one will have the highest engine speed at part throttle. And notice how the center to the nip point, right, the roller on the ramp, doesn't change, but the designer, they change how the ramp pitches up from nip point and they'll pull differently. So that's it for now. In another video, what we'll do is look at ramp versus ramp. And when they looked the same with the pivot bolt in it, but then when we put it in a jig to show the actual relationship lined up as if they're in a clutch. Then we're going to see the differences of how like this one ramp versus another ramp and I could be able to tell you the difference say between a 968 ramp and any other ramp 984, 990, 965 and we can also get to look at the thicknesses of them after here too to tell you give you an idea how they're gonna pull versus one versus another one Okay, see you in another video. Thanks.